Okay, so we've temporarily mounted the turbocharger. This isn't done up. We need to do this up. Um, so this is just a rear housing um, and we're going to build it off the rear housing because it's a part for uh, balancing. So we're going to do these up to 35 newton meters. Now that was the easiest one and we can't get on any others with a socket. Okay, so now that's done, we can mount the turbo. Um, there should be a little roll pin in there, which lines up with a hole here, um, but we don't have where the roll pin snapped. So we're gonna have to manage without. But that's okay, we can line it up roughly by eye. In fact, we can do better. We can mark the location of the roll pin on the outside. And now when we mount it, we can line the two up. Okay, so we'll just pop the nut on. And well, let's get this in a nice serviceable position. That's now mounted where we want it. And we'll mark this to signify that we are done with that one. So we're still waiting on some fittings for the uh, inlet, so we can't do that yet. Uh, sorry for the oil inlet and the coolant and water inlet and outlet, so we'll do that another time. Um, but we can put the compressor housing on, or impeller housing. So let's go and do that. Right, I've seen these done multiple different ways. So I've got one of these turbos myself, um, and I believe that one was completely standard before it was uh, rebuilt for mine. And the way these are sealed from the factory is with some RTV. And this is exactly how I sealed mine uh, and didn't have any issues. But we are gonna wanna make sure that we make a really thin layer. So we're not gonna make this as thick as we would do if we were setting a gasket. This is, we just want a really, really thin film. And any that's here, we do not want it there. To just try and make some clearance around the rim then we'll leave this to dry for 30 60 seconds and then we'll put it on we're not going to do the bolt up for this yet um, because we want the sealant to seal and then we can compress that sealant Later. Okay, so it's time to make up our lines for the turbo. So we're going to do coolant and water, uh, sorry, coolant and oil lines. So we'll first attach our fittings into the block. For now, we'll just do these to 10 Newton meters, which that already is, might go a bit tighter. I go to uh, 15. Okay, 
So then we'll hang the fitting on for now. Obviously we need to make our own lines. So we've got our block oil fitting. So we've got our block fittings done. Now we can do our coolant lines. Now we can do our turbo oil feed with a restrictor, so we're using a one millimeter oil restrictor. So what we'll do is we'll hold the line in position at the top, roughly, so that roughly go there. Then we'll put the bottom portion in position. So I think we'll cut this one about here. So now we need to do the same for our coolants. So one line will run from here. And then the other line we'll loop from here around the back of the head. We'll cut our oil line first, so we'll cut about in the middle of the tape. So now we're going to measure up our tubing for our heat shielding for this uh, hose. Okay, so we just we've done one end now, and um, we're just putting our heat shrink or heat tubing over heat protection. So, found the easiest way to do this is a bit of time as you go. And we're just working it down the other side. So Pretty good. In fact, I think we got that one perfect with the heat shrink tubing. Sorry, not heat shrink, heat shrink, heat protection. So now we'll pop this in. I normally find just a dab of oil on the end helps. Brilliant. Okay. So there we have our oil line done. So let's go pop that on. Okay. So we'll pop the bottom side on first. And we'll just do that hand tight. And then we can bring it up to our top with our restrictor in place. These don't need to be up super tight because the sealing is not done on the threads. So there's one. And I'll just do the bottom one to match. So there we have our oil line. Okay, we're going to follow exactly the same process now for the other coolant lines, so these lines here. So I'm going to go cut those up, get them all fitted together and installed, and I'll come back and show you when I've done that, and we can we can see where we are from there. Okay, so we've got our turbo, we've got our lines mounted, um, so it's looking pretty good now. So we've got our oil line and both coolant lines. Uh, the drain line is not hooked up yet, we still haven't worked out what we're doing with that. Um, and the other coolant line runs back around here, back around the back of the head, we can have a look at that later. 
So now what we need to do is try and make a wastegate for this. Um, so it should have come with one, didn't come with one, so that's okay, we can make our own. Um, so we've got a whole set uh, wastegate and we're gonna try and make it work with this. So first we need to try and convert the internal wastegate over. So this is the tip of the whole set wastegate. So I've drilled this out to match this. And what we're gonna try and do is mount the two of these together. Something like that. I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll probably put some Loctite on here as well for good measure. Not sure that's going to work as we intended because we still need the uh, We still need this to rotate freely. That's okay, we'll try and figure something else out. So rather than using a spring washer, we'll see if we can So that's still free to rotate. So let's try and lock these two nuts together. I think we might need a smaller spanner. So this is still free to rotate. Now what we can do, so it does clear here, there's about a finger, so now we need to make a bracket to mount this, so we've got a scrap piece of metal here, I think we can probably make something useful out of this. So I'm going to make something out of this and I'll bring you back when I've had a go. Okay, so I've had a go at marking a bracket out. Looks a bit weird at the moment, but when we cut it, I think you'll see probably what I'm trying to trying to do. Um, so I'll cut this out and yeah, see what that looks like. My battery died in the camera, um, but I decided to carry it anyway. It's not super interesting watching me make a bracket, um, but here you have a bracket now which holds the uh, wastegate actuator uh, onto the turbo unit. Here you can see the mounting on the front, uh, which brings us on to our next point. So this should have a gasket, which indeed it does, because I've made one, um, to go between these two parts. So didn't come with one, so we had to make our own, but that's okay. So we've got our suitable gasket here. And we'll get that bolted up. Perfect, so now we have our complete uh, turbo assembly. So we still need to work out what we're doing with the drain hose assembly. Um, I have got the drain hose from a standard turbo. So it might be that we make this fit uh, this turbo because at the moment the diameter of the drain hose is different. And we need to make that work somehow. So we'll see what we can do with that, but we'll come back to that later. Um, we're still waiting for the bolts to hold this housing on. Um, 
but hopefully they should be with us uh, pretty soon. Okay, so now we've got the sump back on, we can give everything a good coating of oil. Okay, so now we can apply our sealant. Then we'll leave the other side and then we'll come back. Okay, and to finish this off up here, I'm just going to put some P clips on this wiring. I've cut down some M5 bolts. So that should finish us off quite nicely up here until we get the valley cover on.